at midday, Knox County's Health Department giving us an update on the COVID-19 situation. The department now conducting its briefings twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday, rather than Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and at noon rather than 1230. So let's go ahead and go now live to the briefing that is underway via Zoom. I am Kim Martha Buchanan is at the uh, mic right now giving us that update. Okay, it looks like we are working to get that audio uh, situated, but again, let's listen in. We're ready now. About $850 billion to $1.7 trillion. But please explain what caused uh, the shift. If you are ill or the service provider is ill, reschedule the appointment for a time when no one is ill. Ask the service provider to wear a mask before entering your home and during the entirety of their visit. If you make this known prior to their visit, the precedent is set and it reduces some of the potential awkwardness of having to ask when they arrive. You and anyone else who is home at the time of the visit should also wear a mask while they are working in your home. You can consider having spare masks for, to offer folks if they forgot. Maintain a distance of at least six feet the whole time they are working. During indoor services, take a few steps to maximize ventilation such as turning on the fan or AC or opening windows. After the provider leaves, clean and disinfect surfaces in your home that may have been touched. Those are just a few simple steps to help keep you and those around you safe while still going about your life. As mentioned last night during the Board of Health meeting, Chairman, Chairman of the Board, Dr. Gocher, and I were asked to attend the Joint Government Operations committee meeting in Nashville next Wednesday, August 26. While there will be no deliberation or voting on Board of Health, Board of Health Matters, we wanted to make you aware of this, this meeting since there will be two Board of, Health, Board of Health members meeting uh, gathering. The next Board of Health meeting will be on the same evening at 5 p.m. As a quick note, we want to encourage you to start planning a time to get your flu shot. While we do not have flu shots here at the health department yet, we are aware of some pharmacies in our area that do have the vaccine. It is always important to get your flu shot, but this year it's especially important. Next week, we will move our media briefings to 1230 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. A reminder email from our JIC will come out later today. Now we'll move to the local situation. We have 127 new confirmed cases since yesterday's report, giving us 5,655 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Knox County since March. Additionally, we have 203 probable cases. 3,599 of our cases have recovered, giving us 2,207 active cases. 239 individuals have been hospitalized at some point in their illness. 43 Knox County residents are currently hospitalized. We, gratefully, we are grateful to report no additional deaths related to COVID-19 today, keeping our total at 52. Now we'll transi transition to the bench benchmarks, which are updated weekly on Wednesdays. As a reminder, for the majority of our benchmarks, what we wanna see is no three-day statistically significant shifts within a two-week time period. Every day, we look back at the previous two weeks. That's what a rolling average is. Overall, what we mean by this is what are we trying, what are we, are, are things getting better, staying the same, or getting worse? And if so, how much better or how much worse and at what rate? We will now pull up the data. And as a reminder, all of this data that we're going to talk about today is on our website at covid.knoxcountytn.gov slash case count, uh, hyphen, count. Uh, moving to the first benchmark, sustained reduction or stability in new cases for 14 days. To illustrate this benchmark, we have a bar graph that shows previous cases, new cases, and the growth rate over time. We did not see flags during, the 14, during the, this 14 day time period, which indicates a stable or decreasing trend. However, we, will still, we are still seeing an average of around 88 cases a day. While we are still representing this benchmark as yellow, the lower volume of new cases 
um, over the past 14 days is encouraging. We hope to see the lower volume of new cases turn into a downward trend, but in order for this to happen, everyone needs to continue following the five core actions everywhere they go. Our second benchmark, community-wide sustained and, and increased diagnostic testing with consistent or decreased test result reporting turnaround time. For this benchmark, we utilize two bar graphs, one that shows a sample of the tests conducted from Knox, for Knox County residents and another for the average time between specimen collection and lab report. From the data, we can see the trends are heading in the right direction. The number of tests conducted continues to trend consistently, and the lab turnaround time in our community also reigns consistently. The, the average turnaround time in our community is two days or less. This is encouraging and is why we are representing this benchmark as green. Our third benchmark sustained or increased public health capacity, capability. For this benchmark, we aim to speak to cases within 24 hours and close contacts within 48 hours. To date, throughout this pandemic, we've accomplished that for all of our cases and contacts. Because of that, this benchmark continues to be represented as green. Our RP support team remains consistent at 233 individuals and is well equipped to handle the current caseload. Should the local situation change, we will make adjustments to increase our cap capacity accordingly. Our fourth benchmark, healthcare system capabilities remain within current and forecasted surge capacity. These graphs show the availability of regional hospital beds, ICU beds and ventilators in our hospitals from our hospital partners. It also shows the additional surge capacity for these categories as well as the COVID positive patients and the patients with pending test results in the hospital. These data are gathered from the information hospitals put into the Tennessee Healthcare Resource Tracking System or HERTS. It may reflect Knox County, the East Region, or patients from other jurisdictions. This benchmark, the traffic, for this benchmark, the traffic light is yellow. We did experience a day of statistically significant increases regarding positive patients but there were no flags noted for ICU patients or ventilated patients. After speaking with our hospital partners, they stated their benchmark should be represented as yellow. The hospital systems continue to meet daily, assess the situation and plan their response together. As always, decisions regarding how to classify this benchmark as green, yellow or red are made in concert with our hospital partners, as well as taking all of the data into consideration. Our fifth benchmark, sustained or decreased COVID-19 related death rate for identified positive and probable cases. For this benchmark, we use a graph that shows the reported deaths of Knox County residents by date of death. This benchmark is represented as yellow. As a note, over the 14 days, days that this benchmark was measured, 11 deaths were reported compared to 17 reported in last week's benchmark. I'll now open it up for questions. 